Hello everyone and good evening to some more Sporting Memories and tonight is the answers for your 2010 quiz. So we've had a bit of a journey haven't we through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties and this rounds off the 2010s. So let's see how successful you've been. Should be quite recent information. Um, there's quite a bit of football in this one so if you're a football fan I expect you to have got those right of course. I'll go through the questions and then we'll go through what the answers are. So number one, we said, how many times have Arsenal won the FA Cup in the 2010s? And of course, all you Arsenal fans are going to tell me it is indeed three times in the 2010s. So when were they? Well, the number one was the 13-14 season. When they beat Hull City after extra time, three goals to two. In the 14-15 season, when they beat Aston Villa, 4-0, quite comprehensive. And in the 16th and 17th year, when they beat Chelsea, two goals to one. Now, of course, you're probably thinking they're the current FA Cup holders. That's correct. But that's obviously moved into a new decade now. And it's also brought Arsenal there. 14th FA Cup win. Wow, that's amazing. So, answer number one, three times. Number two, who was the top run scorer when England won the 2010-11 Ashes series? And the cricketer we're looking for is Alistair Cook. Alistair Cook, he scored 766 runs, including an unbeaten 235, as England won the series... 3-1, which is pretty convincing, wasn't it? So number two, Alistair Cook. Number three, who won Great Britain's first gold medal? Sorry, final. I said that last time, didn't I? Who won Great Britain's final gold medal on Super Saturday at the 2012 Games? So it wasn't Ennis Hill. It wasn't Greg Rutherford. It was Mo Farah, wasn't it? Yet, yeah, gold in the 10,000 metre final after Ennis Hill had won the heptathlon and Greg Rutherford had leapt to glory in the long jump. So remember, Mo won uh, the 5 and the 10,000 metres gold in 2012 and he astonishingly repeated that in 2016. Amazing. Number four, Tottenham did not win a single trophy in 2010. When was the last decade they failed to fail to lift any silverware? And of course we were looking for the 1940s. So it goes back a long way now. Tottenham have obviously been a pretty successful side. Number five. Which player successfully defended the PDC World Darts Championship in 2012? If you know your darts, you'll know that this was, of course, Adrian Lewis, otherwise known as Jackpot. Lewis beat Andy Hamilton 7-3 in the final to win the title for the second successive year. He used to practice as a youngster, interestingly, with Phil Taylor. And he made his TV, TV debut at the young age of 19. Wow. Well done if you got Adrian Lewis. Number six... Which Liverpool player featured in more Premier League games than any other player in the 2010s? Now, who could that be, you're saying? Well, it's a, he's still with them now. And it is Jordan Henderson. That's right. Jordan Henderson has played more games than any other Premier League player in the 2010s. 308. He's been at Liverpool since 2011. And obviously, he's winning a reasonable amount of stuff with them as well, which is good to see, especially if you're a fan. Number seven. In 2013, Lance Armstrong admitted to taking performance-enhancing drugs in a TV interview with which television personality? I'm sure you all know that this one was Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey, that's correct. He'd already, I believe... Um, admitted to doping prior to that 
but it was the interview itself which kind of put it all out there in his own words. So he was unfortunately stripped of his seven tour titles, banned from cycling for life. And it was a sad situation. I mean, he was one of my heroes, to be honest. And uh, when I found out about it all, I got all my, tour, all my Lance Armstrong books, took them down to the charity shop. I kept one of them, though. But it is what it is. And um, there was a lot of doping in cycling. We're not condoning it. But hopefully it's a cleaner sport now. Number eight. What was the score in Sir Alex Ferguson's final game in charge of Manchester United? This is May 2013. Well, it, it was with, first of all, let's say who it was, West Bromwich Albion. Anybody remember the score? It's an astonishing score. Five goals all. 5-5. Five, five. Wow. They set a record for the first um, match in Premier League ever for both teams to score five goals. That must have been a bit bittersweet for Ferguson, Alex Ferguson, to leave on. Yes, his team scored five goals, but they let in five. Not great. Number nine. Who was Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes teammate when he won the 2014 Formula One world title? And we were looking for the name of Nico Rosberg. Nico Rosberg, do you remember him? He retired in 2016. He won his title in 2016 and then off he went. He retired. He was replaced by Bottas and uh, a lot of people couldn't really understand why Nico Rosberg retired, but he did. He said it was for his family and uh, did he have any more Formula One titles within him? Possibly. It's hard to say. But some riders, drivers, sorry, they win the title. I'm thinking of Damon Hill, I'm thinking of James Hunt, and uh, they don't go on, do they? That much longer. Number 10. Which 50 to 1 outsider won the 2015 World Snooker Championships? And it was. Any ideas? No, it wasn't Sean Murphy. It was Stuart Bingham. Well done if you got Stuart Bingham. He came back from 8 4 down to beat Sean Murphy 18 15 in the final. Um, he's joined Ken Doherty as the only players to have won the world title at amateur and professional. So just a little extra there. So it was Stuart Bingham. You probably remember watching that one. Number 11. In which city was Conor McGregor's 2017 fight with Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather held? Well, it was held in the money-rich Las Vegas area. And Nevada, which is adjacent to Las Vegas. And it was known as the Money Fight. It was held at the T-Mobile Arena. Mayweather defeated McGregor in the 10th round by knockout. And it was estimated that McGregor took home $130 million. And Mayweather, $280 million. That's astonishing. Hence why it's called the Money Fight. Number 12. Which two teams met in the 2010 World Cup final and what was the result? Well, I'll remember this one because, of course, I was rooting for Holland being half Dutch, but not double Dutch. Uh, it was Holland v Spain, wasn't it? Um, it needed extra time. Um, Spain won one goal to nil, lifting the trophy, and Holland went on still further without winning a World Cup. They came close in 74, beaten by West Germany. They claimed, came close in 78, beaten by Argentina. So their weight goes on. So I was sad to see that. So number 13, which Britain became the most successful Winter Olympian with two successive golds in the skeleton? And the answer we're looking for was Lizzie Yarnold. Do you remember Lizzie Yarnold? So she got the gold at 2014 Sochi and the gold at 2018 Pyeongchang, South Korea. Not to be confused, of course, with Pyongyang, North Korea. So the skeleton is where you go down head first, not to be confused with the luge. And, uh, and then I think she retired, didn't she, after that? 
Number 14. Which, Britain, which British equestrian rider took gold in the 2012 and 2016 Olympics? And that wasn't David Broom, it wasn't Harvey Smith, they're further back in time. It was Nick Skelton, do you remember that name, Nick Skelton? He was 58 years of age when he won the individual jumping gold in 2016. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? And Nick also has competed now in seven different Olympic Games. Wow, starting off, I think, in 88 at Seoul. That's pretty impressive. So, number 14, Nick Skelton. Well done if you got that. And finally, number 15 from the 2010s, Andy Murray won three Grand Slam singles titles in the 2010s. Which ones did he win? And if you're really good, you'll tell me what dates. So let's go back to the first one, the US Open, wasn't it, in 2012. He beat Novak Djokovic in five sets. His first Wimbledon win was in 2013, when he beat Djokovic in three sets. And he won again in Wimbledon in 2016, beating Milos Ronick in eight, in three sets, sorry, eight sets, listen to me, in three straight sets. So three Grand Slam singles. But he also, if you look at the records, got to the final of the French and Australian Open in 2016. So he really was motoring, wasn't he? Um, in 2016. So we'll have to see how he gets on after the surgery he's had, but hopefully he can get back to some uh, Grand Slam finals and uh, carry on winning some more titles. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tour down the 2010s. I hope I covered some of your sporting moments and, uh, and that you got a good score. So till next time, bye bye for now.